Hey, what's up everyone? Mumble here with a quick Starfield update video. Today we got an interesting drop of news on the Starfield official Instagram page. There's four slides in here that give us a little bit of history on how the settled systems came to be, but more importantly, some interesting information on the constellation timeline. So these first four slides I'll go through and then we'll actually go to the redirect link from BGS. So first thing we've got here is in 2050, how humans first arrive on Mars and then over the next hundred years, humans start living in space, and then they eventually colonize Alpha Centauri, which is just over four light years away from Earth. And then three years later, the United Colonies are officially established, so we know them as one of the main factions within the game. And then in 2060, New Atlantis is founded. In 2061, it becomes the official capital city of the United Colonies. So again, that's one of the core cities that we'll be visiting on Jemison. And we're gonna actually move over to the redirect link here. So this brings us to the official Starfield website. And then at the bottom, they've now added this, the story so far section, which has a huge timeline of 20 plus different notable events that kind of bring us to the present day where our story will be starting on September 1st. So again, we've got these first four entries that we've just gone over. And then if we keep moving on, we can see how things like the Freestar Collective are founded, uh, and some of the other factions within the game. So 2167, Cheyenne is settled by Solomon Co. So if any of you remember, Sam Co. is one of Constellation's uh, companions that we can have as a romanceable companion within the game. So this is likely going to be their great, great, great grandfather. If we're thinking general generational timelines, maybe one more great in there, who knows? Uh, and so he's the founder of their first settlement in Aquila City. And then in 2188, uh, Ko invites Volley. So Volley is actually where Neon is based to join Cheyenne in its new alliance, the Freestar Collective. And that's when the Freestar Collective officially becomes formed in 2189. So we've got about a 30 year gap between the United Colonies and the Freestar Collective being formed. And so they are the two main parties that are part of the those great space wars, so to speak, that causes a lot of chaos within the systems. So in 2194, United Colonies positioned the star station called the Clinic in orbit around Dipala in the Narayan system. The unaffiliated peoples of the Narayan system see this as a UC attempt to expand their borders and demand the UC remove the Clinic. When UC refuses, the people of Narayan vote to join the Freestar Collective, who mobilize to protect the system in 2195. So you can see there's a lot of tension starting here. And then in 2196, in response to the Freestar mobilization, UC moves a fleet into the Narayan system and Freestar responds in kind and the Narayan war begins. So this is the first of what ends up being two big wars between these, between the Freestar Collective and the UC. In 2216, the Narayan war drags on as public sentiment sours. Finally, the Treaty of Narayan is signed by the UC and Freestar Collective in 2216, ending the conflict. The term settled systems is formed in the treaty, is formalized in the treaty rather. So this is where the whole settled systems comes to be. And we'll see very quickly that peace isn't always something that lasts forever between these two groups. Uh, and it's kind of interesting to see how uh, within the way they portray the, uh, the UC, they kind of look like, oh, shining star, the good people trying to make uh, things all good in the galaxy. But honestly, they seem a lot more tyrannical than I think they're coming across. And the Freestar Collective is more like the rough around the edges cowboys who really are more about peace and letting people just live their lives. So it, it'll be interesting to see what other people think of this. So 2221, we've got Freestar Rangers are founded as an elite protective and investigative force dedicated to serving all citizens of the Freestar Collective. So those Freestar Rangers, that's what Sam Co is, is part of before he joins Constellation. And then in 2275, we said that this is the actual formation of Constellation by Sebastian Banks. I'm wondering if there, there's sort of this picture when we first see the walk up into the Constellation room, there's kind of this guy on this glowing picture. I'll put up a, uh, a still of that. I wonder if that's Sebastian Banks, kind of like the Constellation Lord and Savior or something. Uh, we'll have to see. But uh, original members include Chloe Bao, accompanied by physicist uh, Aja Mamasa, the youngest member and Sebastian's protege, protege Darius Andres, who's a botanist and specialist in Xenoflora, uh, Bernadette Laurent, wealthy heiress and adventurer, 
Everardo Gill, former smuggler, and Kadri Toma, who is a biologist and physician. So, you know, we've got like a widespread of different people who are part of Constellation. I'm wondering how big this group ends up being. Is it just this very small localized group kind of similar to what we have now where there's only, you know, five or six people in Constellation? Or does this really grow into something that's huge? We don't really get a lot of detail on that from these further entries, but uh, that'd be something interesting to know. So the lodge is built in New Atlantis to serve the needs of the people, uh, to serve the needs and people of Constellation for generations to come. I mean, we only, if it's 2275 here, our story starts like 50 years out from here. So like there's maybe like two generations that have taken advantage of this. And the lodge I'm assuming is definitely that place that we walk up into where we flash our chrono mark to get into that building. That makes the most sense, at least from here. So fast forward 30 years, this is when our good friend Barrett joins Constellation. So it's interesting, he's actually the oldest member of Constellation of the people who are currently within the Constellation that we know. And I think he's actually one of the most important people in Constellation uh, based on these entries, actually. Go forward a couple more years, we've got some more tension with uh, Freestar Collective stuff. So Freestar Collective begins farming on the planet of Vesta in the Lunara system. By 2308, the United Colonies claims that by establishing a colony in a fourth star system, that Freestar Collective has violated the Treaty of Narayan. Talks break down, and then UC lay siege to Vesta, killing anyone who stayed behind or was brought in to defend it, and the colony war officially begins. So this is that second war. So this is interesting, right? Freestar Collective, that's where the Freestar Rangers are part of. These guys are just farming on this planet. And then UC Colony says, screw you guys, you can't be doing this. And they just decide to blow these guys all up. Very, uh, very rough of them to just start laying siege to these people who are just trying to farm. Like maybe they could have had come to a little more diplomatic uh, end game here, but clearly those talks broke down and they thought we'll just blow you guys up instead. Fast forward a couple more years, Constellation comes into possession of their first artifact and tucks it away in Constellation archives. This is interesting and I'll get back to this in a later entry, but it's kind of weird how they just find this artifact and then nothing becomes of it, even though Barrett is part of Constellation. You'll see in a minute though. Uh, 2311, after several years of conflict, the colony war effectively comes to an end with the Battle of Cheyenne as a flotilla of civilian and military Freestar collective ships take down the major ships of the UC Navy using hit and run tactics. So the Freestar homies end up taking over these guys, even though it feels like they're kind of the underdogs in this, they just outbrain these guys. So 2315, UC Vanguard is founded as part of a UC response to the Freestar Collective's use of civilian ships during the Colony War. So the Vanguard is the UC's own civilian Navy that relies on civilians using their own ship who pledged to protect the UC and its interests. So your reward for giving your ship and basically fronting all the cash to defend the good people of the UC is you get citizenship and get to be part of the UC. So pretty big brain move on, on the UC to just get the people to front everything for their war efforts and protection efforts, so to speak. Four years later, we finally see Sarah Morgan actually come into the picture. So she's the youngest head of the UC Navigator Corps. It's a short-lived position as the division gets shut down. Only a year later, cast adrift but eager to put her training to good use, she ends up joining Constellation. I'm curious like how, how well-known Constellation is. Like it doesn't give us any hint as to how popular this group of explorers is. Like in the direct, it talks about them as being like almost forgotten, even though it was founded only like 50 years before our story starts. So it's it's very unclear on that that aspect right now. Two more years later, we get Walter Stroud, who's the co-owner of Stroud Eklund, one of Settled Systems' premier Starship manufacturers. Joining Constellation becomes their primary financial backer. So that's the big rich guy who's always in a suit. Um, he's basically just the money in the equation here. Then we get former Crimson Fleet pirate Vlad Sal to join Constellation. So that's the, the jacked guy who's just pumping iron uh, in the direct. 2325, Sarah Morgan becomes chair of Constellation. Not sure how that decision gets made, but obviously she seems to be like strong leadership material from the way they've portrayed her in the direct. Uh, but that also is interesting. So 2325 versus when it was originally founded, like we're only 50 years into the future. I'm very curious, like how many of these original members are still part of Constellation? Is it a group that started to fizzle out and people kind of lost faith in the exploration? Did they even know what they were even looking for? Because they obviously found an artifact and didn't do jack shit with it like after that like 15 years or whatever. So Sarah Morgan's now chair of Constellation. We get theologian uh, Matteo Catri, um, who also joined. So we've we've heard of him before. And then Barrett. So this this is where it gets interesting. It's 2326 and Barrett finds the original artifact in the Constellation archives. 
and knows it must be special. I'm not really sure how this makes sense considering Barrett was already in Constellation five years before they found the first artifact. So look, it's been 16, 16 years now and like Barrett's just finding this now. That's why I'm wondering like, was he privy to all the information on these artifacts? I thought these guys were all like one big squad where they're talking about all the shit that they're finding, but clearly he didn't know anything about it. Now it's all like, ooh, I found this artifact. It's gotta be special. So I don't know how that really lines up, but in any case, Barrett clearly is playing like a very important role here. If he's the one who's saying this artifact has something special to it, and we're only two years before our actual journey starting where the artifacts are very likely gonna be like the main focal point of the campaign. So a couple more months go down, correspondence with Sarah Morgan, with graduate student and gifted scientist Noel, and she gets invited to join Constellation. So we know about uh, Noel as well. That's kind of her protege here. One more year forward, we get Sam Co to actually join uh, from the Freestar Rangers into Constellation. But what's also super interesting is um, his daughter Cora is joining Constellation. We've never heard anything of her before. So that's another person added to Constellation that we didn't know about. And then this person, Andrea, also joins Constellation. So two people that we had no idea of uh, prior to this are actually Constellation members. And we know that for romanceable characters who can be actual companions, not just crew members, they are ones who can have, you know, four perks when you recruit them into your crew as a companion. I'm curious if these two are also going to be able to fall under that category and they just have not been teasing them until this very moment today. Final entry on the list is 2328. We get Barrett convincing Constellation to purchase Star Station L868 and modify it to become a deep space scanner nicknamed the eye. So we actually have heard of this before. It's in one of the very first videos um, of Starfield promotion where you've got this guy kind of like on a radio voice talking about Star Station L868. And they're all throw the video up with this as I talk about it uh, once I edit. But you can actually see this sort of like pan through the star station and i'm pretty sure it's actually barrett inside of it which would make sense if this is the guy who is convincing them to buy it and he explicitly mentions the eye by name so that's got to be sort of the constellation home away from home where i'm guessing they're doing a lot of their research and pinpointing maybe where some of these additional artifacts would be this is constellation star station lo868 welcome aboard the eye is showing signs over another one of those big anomalies. So pretty cool stuff. Like we, we knew probably maybe half of the information that we saw here, but this gives us a much better idea of, you know, why is there that tension between uh, the Freestar Collective and UC? Like what's causing those wars? And like in my mind, like the way I'm thinking of Freestar Collective versus UC is like Freestar definitely seems like more chill. They're a little rough around the edges. They're just like farmers, cowboys, like just living life in space. And UC is very much like law and order. You must do as we say, you must pledge your life and service and your own personal assets to make the galaxy a better place and I don't know it's a little weird it feels like pretty oppressive even though they seem to give off this aura of being happy everything is good in the galaxy if you follow the UC ways um, so yeah let me know what you think uh, just thought it'd be worth digging into this update because I know a lot of people are not quite as familiar with the actual backstory on how these sort of settled systems came to be so yeah if you enjoyed the video make sure to drop a like and if you want to see more Starfield content like this then make sure to subscribe see you in the next one peace